Dean Baker's The Conservative Nanny State, How the Wealthy Use the Government to Stay Rich and Get Richer, takes a critical lens to the relationship between the wealthy elite and government policies, revealing the intricacies of a system that ostensibly champions free market ideals but often functions to protect and expand the wealth of the affluent. Baker's central premise challenges the common narrative that portrays government intervention as solely benefiting the less privileged. Instead, he unveils how the affluent class strategically employs governmental mechanisms to safeguard their economic status and further augment their riches. By coining the term, conservative nanny state, Baker provocatively suggests that this group manipulates state power akin to a nanny, safeguarding and nurturing the interests of the wealthy while cloaked in the rhetoric of free market principles. One of Baker's compelling arguments revolves around intellectual property rights and patents, domains traditionally upheld as the cornerstone of innovation and progress. Contrary to this notion, Baker argues that these mechanisms often serve the wealthy by granting them monopolistic control over ideas and products, consequently hindering genuine competition and innovation. The beneficiaries of this system aren't the inventive minds but rather the corporations and wealthy individuals who utilize these patents to secure their market dominance and inflate their wealth. Moreover, Baker delves into the realm of financial regulation, highlighting how it frequently functions as a safety net for the affluent. Despite claims of deregulation fostering healthy competition, Baker contends that the financial sector is rife with policies that protect the wealthy from bearing the brunt of their own risks. He draws attention to the bailouts of financial institutions during crises, portraying them as a glaring example of the government cushioning the wealthy from the repercussions of their speculative actions, effectively socializing losses while privatizing gains. Baker's analysis extends to labor markets, where he scrutinizes policies that suppress wages and benefit the wealthy elite. By exploring issues like the minimum wage and anti-union strategies, he demonstrates how the conservative nanny state perpetuates an economic structure that favors the affluent class by undermining the bargaining power of the working population. Policies that limit unionization or keep the minimum wage below living standards indirectly subsidize corporations and the wealthy, ensuring a continuous flow of profits at the expense of the working class. Furthermore, the book addresses the housing market, revealing how government policies often serve to inflate property values and consequently benefit the wealthy who own these assets. Baker sheds light on zoning laws, tax deductions for mortgage interest and other housing policies that, while seemingly neutral, disproportionately advantage those with substantial property holdings, thereby contributing to wealth concentration and perpetuating socioeconomic disparities. Baker's argument is a stark critique of the prevalent neoliberal ideology that champions free market principles while obfuscating the ways in which government interventions consistently reinforce the interests of the affluent. Through a meticulous examination of various sectors, he compellingly demonstrates how these policies maintain and amplify the wealth of the rich under the guise of promoting economic growth and opportunity for all. In conclusion, the conservative nanny state presents a thought-provoking analysis that challenges conventional perceptions of government intervention. Baker's exploration of intellectual property, financial regulation, labor markets, and housing policies unravels a complex system that ostensibly upholds free market ideals but effectively functions as a mechanism to perpetuate and augment the wealth of the wealthy elite.